They let you play, watch, shop, chat. And they're the reason we spend way too much time staring at our smartphones, worrying about important stuff like whether our farm could use some more pigs. But what if these apps were spying on us, listening to everything we say, collecting every bit of our data, and even selling it? I wish I was kidding. We all know that data collection or tracking is happening. Regardless of the software, whether it's Android or iOS, many apps access our personal information. This can be helpful, but it's definitely an invasion of our privacy. So who is selling and buying your personal data? What happens with your data once sold? And are there any privacy-friendly apps out there? Let's take a look. Where we are, what we eat, watch or buy, all of that is not only important to us. Banks, insurers, landlords and especially businesses which have a product to sell are increasingly interested in our personal data. And data marketing firms deliver. These so-called data brokers like Experian collect all kinds of information. They analyze and package the data and sell it to businesses and advertisers. But how is that possible? Google's and Apple's policy state it's prohibited to share user data with or sell it to third parties that aren't improving the app experience or displaying ads in the app. So everything that happens within the realm of their electronic boundaries should be scrutinized, right? Not really. And that is because Facebook's and also Google's businesses are built on advertising-based revenue. The two major companies run their own advertising ecosystems. So not sharing their user data protects their competitive advantage. However, smaller websites such as, let's say your local event guide, do have a strong financial incentive to share data with third parties. And this is what the money trail looks like. The buyer pays the seller a fixed amount of money for the user data. Here's an example. A company that has a million monthly active users. Now, the third party pays five US dollars for the data of 1,000 users per month. The selling company will get $5,000 going straight to their pockets. But, and this is where it gets very interesting, users have to accept location tracking. Without that, it should not be possible for companies to track you. The problem is that most apps inform users they are using location data, but almost no apps say that they are sharing it with a third party. And even if you restrict location access on an app, that won't necessarily prevent it from knowing your location. In 2018, researchers found that 581 Android apps including dozens made for children, shared Wi-Fi access point names and MAC addresses. By the way, if you want to find out more about how apps collect our data, check out our video report on tracking. Click here or find the link in the video description. Marketers say that the information they are collecting is anonymized. But if a company knows where we eat, when we eat and how much we spend, can you still call that anonymity? Once they bought our data, data brokers create profiles through so-called data mining. They search for patterns and trends in large data sets. Most of the data management organizations combine two or more techniques to reach a result as accurate as possible. Let me quickly explain two of them. One, association. This is one of the widely known data mining techniques. It is also known as relation technique because it focuses on deciphering the relationship of two different data sets. For example, data brokers might identify that I always buy ice cream when I buy chocolates and therefore suggest that the next time I am buying chocolates, I might also want to buy ice cream. Two, clustering. Different data information is grouped together in a single cluster. If data brokers use clustering on our data sets, little by little they get a unique user profile, which is used to push targeted products and services. An example. Mobile phone companies can predict which customers are likely to leave for another company. They cluster information such as how often you call customer service, which websites you visit and other metrics. You then get a probability score and according to that score, you receive targeted offers if you are at high risk of leaving. It's as easy as this. No free service is actually free. If you don't want your data to be collected, there are some things you can do. Use a VPN, a virtual private network, and don't forget to clear your internet cache and cookies regularly. But there are some privacy-friendly apps which do not collect your data. And here are two of them 
you might find handy for your daily life. First, wire. With WhatsApp, the most popular messenger app being owned by Facebook, alternatives need to be able to compete with a multi-billion empire. Since that is not possible, they have to convince users with something which makes them distinguishable from WhatsApp. Wire was launched in 2014 with data protection as part of their business model. In 2016, its co-founder and CEO Alan Durich explained why. Our digital privacy is uh, getting abused and there are no ways uh, how to follow it and uh, uh, how to deal with it when breaches are happening. Since its launch, Wire has proven itself as a safe alternative to established messaging services, including Skype. The app is available for both your smartphone and computer, and it's free if you use it for private reasons only. And the best thing, it doesn't gather any data. Now all I have to do is convince my friends to switch messaging apps. <laughs> Two, DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo is available as an app and as a search engine. This means you can also use it with other browsers like Google Chrome, Firefox or Safari. The app doesn't use cookies to track you around the web. In fact, it doesn't collect any personal information at all, doesn't log your searches and it automatically hides your IP address from the sites you visit. This is very different to competing browsers, which often offer the possibility to surf in incognito mode. But that only prevents your own computer from storing your data. Websites and data brokers can still track you when surfing the web incognito. The downside of DuckDuckGo is only noticeable when you're running fuzzy searches. Google, with its tons of gathered information, will perform better. Are you worried about data brokers selling your data? And what privacy-friendly alternatives do you use? Let us know in the comments. If you have a digital topic for us to cover, let us know as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye-bye.